Thank you again for joining us for the Tomcat track at Apache Con at Home for Wednesday, September 30th. Jean-Frédéric Claire will present Tomcat from a cluster to a cloud, where he will demonstrate as well as describe how to deploy Tomcat into uh, clustered and cloud environments. Thank you very much. OK, uh, thank you. So. Uh... Let's start a uh, small agenda. I'm going to uh, briefly say why I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, speak about uh, uh, basically uh, Tomcat in the cloud. Uh, we start from the cluster, I speak about session replication, where you need the, uh, where you may need it. Uh, I'm going to speak about the cloud. We have two kinds of replication in the cloud. Uh, so I will uh, go in detail. Uh, how those things are working. Uh, I'm going to explain how the demo is working and somehow it, a quick introduction uh, uh, to the um, uh, to Kubernetes uh, and how you use it. Um, I have, uh, I'm going to speak shortly on the operator uh, and I want to have some time uh, for questions, suggestions. So, um, uh, I need to hurry up. So uh, uh, I've been working for Red Hat for several years. I, I'm a Tomcat committer uh, since a long, long time. I've been doing open source for several years and I'm living in Switzerland. So uh, let's jump in the, in the topic. Uh, so uh, basically uh, a Tomcat cluster. Uh, when do we use a Tomcat cluster or what? Uh, do we do with a Tomcat cluster? Uh, so basically, uh, a Tomcat cluster is basically you want go, you're going to share your load between uh, different Tomcat. To share the load, uh, you will need a, a load balancer like uh, HTTPD with mod proxy, for example, or Nginx as it was presented in the previous session. Uh, and you have some hardware uh, which connect you to uh, the internet, uh, which could be also doing uh, some proxying stuff, but we'll basically make sure that your Tomcat are correctly protected uh, against the internet, because um, I would not uh, expose uh, an application uh, directly to the internet. You might expose a Tomcat directly uh, to internet, for example, if you are just serving page or demo application, but if you have a database application, you probably want to have a proxy first, basically, to, make, to be able to make load balancing and things like that. So um, why would we need session replication? Uh, you don't always need session replication. Uh, you might have applications that are sessionless. Uh, in this case, they don't need uh, session replication. But uh, it's a bit difficult to write an application like a, a shopping chart without a session. Basically, you want uh, the customer to kind of identify himself or you identify him with a session ID, uh, he buys his stuff, you add it to uh, the session information, to uh, his information, and a good way to, or easy way to do this is to store that in the session. Uh, why we didn't uh, to replicate the session? Uh, well, because first, uh, there's no reason that uh, when you are connected uh, via a browser to a server that uh, you might uh, lost lose the connection and get it again. So basically, uh, you will have to uh, uh, to keep this, the things. The protocol, HTTP 1.1, uh, like uh, which is the base we use everywhere uh, in the internet, uh, basically have no transaction, no persistent connection. So basically, you, you're going to make one request, uh, send some data, get a, a response, and you might drop the connection. So uh, you know, in, in a web app, like we are speaking about web app, uh, where you, and that, that's the same if you would use PHP, uh, you use a cookie to carry the session ID, because basically you, you don't, you're not going to store everything, you're not going to store your whole uh, uh, shopping chart uh, in the session, uh, you're going just to, uh, uh, you're not going to, to store all your shopping chart in a cookie, but you're going to, to, uh, uh, to store a, a 
it in a, in a, in a session and you need a session ID to be able to find back the session. Um, of course, uh, if we have a cluster, a cluster means several Tomcat running, uh, you want a multi, it's going to be a multi node that's going a, se, se, um, a certain num, number of Tomcat, basically two at least. Uh, you can, uh, you, once you have created a session, uh, you can make sure that uh, mod proxy will uh, uh, direct you to the, uh, to, to the same Tomcat, so you find the session ID, but in case you can't do that for any reason, uh, it's interesting to replicate the information. So each Tomcat will have the same uh, session information. Basically, uh, every time you modify something in the uh, shopping chart, uh, uh, basically you send a request, uh, the Tomcat is going to get that information and is going to propagate whatever you add to the shopping chart to uh, the session information. Uh, so how do we configure uh, the session replication in a cluster configuration? That's, that's very easy. Uh, the basic, basic stuff is basically you, you're going to use uh, in server.xml, uh, you just uh, uh, put an entry cluster, you put a cluster name, sample, sample uh, TCP IP cluster, TCP cluster, and that's it. What does it do? Uh, in fact, uh, it's going to create uh, several uh, elements, it's going to create a channel, it's going to uh, create a member chip, uh, class name, uh, a, number, uh, a, a membership for the tribe, uh, and this membership is what we are interested in. Uh, in, in the case of the basic uh, um, uh, cluster, uh, it's uh, an MCAST service. Basically, when you have the entry uh, uh, membership uh, and the class name, uh, when you use the MCAST service, it's basically going to tell, uh, use a default uh, multicast address and the default port to discover the other running Tomcat uh, in your network. So now we want to move this uh, to the cloud. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, we're going to, instead of having a, a kind of a, a piece of hardware uh, that belongs to us, uh, we have the cloud, uh, which is basically a service provided by someone else. Uh, could be Amazon, could be Google, uh, and some other Alibaba, or, uh, and so on. So basically, what happened in these things? Uh, for the for the moment, most of the most of the cloud are, are running uh, Linux containers. Uh, so basically, you're going to have. Um, uh, a bunch of dedicated uh, container which are running a kind of uh, master which we name control plane uh, and uh, you have nodes uh, in the, the nodes uh, you have uh, nodes is a kind of like it could be a real box it could be a virtual box uh, in those nodes you're going to have pods and the pods are going to run individual tomcat so you can have uh, uh, like in this example, uh, you, you have the control plane, which is going basically to take care that the node are started, the pod are started, the pod are restarted if needed. Uh, it will ping them uh, and uh, restart them if they are not answering, uh, recreate them if we delete them. Uh, it can take care also of um, uh, reporting when a node is going away. Uh, in the case of Kubernetes, you have to recreate a node if it's going away. Uh, but basically, normally your server should not go away. And if you go away, you have a problem. Uh, but you have several of them running, so uh, you don't care very much. One of the big things is like when, you, when you're running something uh, in the cloud, uh, if your application is broken, uh, you need to have something reporting uh, that there's something wrong, because otherwise you might not notice it, because basically uh, when, a time, when the Tomcat will be crashing or when the application will be crashing, it will be restarted automatically by the control plane. So that could be something very interesting if you want to have availability. So we have a problem with the cloud. Basically, uh, we can't use multicast. So we have been investigating two different solutions, uh, which I'm going to explain a little late, uh, a, a bit later. Uh, we have uh, pods uh, instead machines, and uh, 
we have different kind of load balances and those load balances depend on the infrastructure. Uh, they are mostly using uh, an ingress and the ingress is going to use uh, usually NGINX or HA proxy. So here the problem we have, uh, we were using uh, multicast and we need to discover the other uh, Tomcat that are running. Uh, so one solution is to use the um, uh, um, uh, Kubernetes API, uh, basically to uh, discover the other Tomcat that are running. Uh, we're going to create the Tomcat, we put them uh, all in the same name space, for example, then we can a query uh, to all the pods that are running in this namespace, then we can find all the Tomcat. So one of the solution is the uh, QBA ping, which means uh, Kubernetes ping. Uh, basically this is, we're going to access uh, to the Kubernetes uh, uh, control plane, and we're going to ask him what are the, the pod running Tomcat. Uh, it's it's very easy. Uh, it's a kind of well, it's protected with some security stuff, which uh, I will uh, quickly uh, explain later. Uh, basically, we do a get. Uh, we require we tell the API, the version of the API. We want a, non, uh, a namespace. In the in this example, uh, the namespace we are using uh, uh, is uh, Tomcat in the cloud. Uh, and we want the pod. Uh, we get an answer, which is a list of the running pods, and uh, we're going to be interested in the one that are, of course, running. Uh, it has the name, which could be a nice thing to display. Uh, and uh, one important thing, you have uh, uh, the pod IP. The pod IP is kind of an internal uh, IP address uh, the infrastructure is, is providing you. Um, in, for example, uh, you have a Kubernetes uh, layer network like a Wave, which is going to allow you uh, to basically uh, connect all the pods together. So each pod have an IP address, and from one pod you can access to the other if you are in the same namespace, and if you have the right authorization. Another is uh, using a DNS. Uh, we name it DNS. It's uh, kind of like it's a service. Uh, in Kubernetes, uh, which allows you uh, basically to define uh, how you want to discover other pod running your application. So you're going to have a kind of a mark on your application. It could be something like a tag, like uh, run uh, Tomcat. Uh, and then um, every, uh, you start a service and this service is going to uh, um, uh, allow you to uh, make a uh, lookup uh, to this um, uh, to this service. If you name the service uh, Tomcat, then you can uh, make a DNS lookup on Tomcat. It's going to return all the Tom, all the pods that are running uh, with the run Tomcat, for example. So uh, this is this is uh, this is uh, what I have here um, uh, a little more in detail. Uh, it makes basically a nest lookup. Um, I have used the namespace here uh, because it's, it's a bit more easy to understand, but basically it's a service, it's the name of the service. And you make just uh, an internet uh, get all by name, and then it returns you uh, what you see. Uh, this is basically uh, here, uh, that's OpenShift, but that's the same in Kubernetes. Uh, you uh, connect to one pod, uh, you SSH to this pod, and then you can make a NS lookup uh, to the service, and the service is going to provide you all um, the pods, uh, all the IP of the pods that are running, uh, uh, the, that are running um, uh, the Tomcat, which basically, which are running, which all pods that are running uh, with the correct selector. So um, if we want to move the, uh, to, to do the session replication in the cloud, uh, we come back to the uh, uh, server.xml. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, change just the membership uh, class. Uh, basically, you, uh, uh, the first example is using the DNS thing, uh, and the other one is using the Kubernetes membership. In case you use the QB ping, uh, you have to provide a lot of information. 
uh, that look a bit uh, scary here. Uh, uh, you have to give in the uh, control plane or master. Uh, basically, it's need the IP, uh, the way to connect to it. Um, it can connect using a, a client certificate and key, uh, depending on how you configure your Kubernetes, or a token, uh, it needs the namespace. In the, in the case of a DNS ping, it just needs the DNS service name. Um, and we can have a look to the, uh, I'm going to try to make that, oops, general error, okay. Um, it seems like crash open office. Okay, uh, I'm back, sorry. I'm going to use another screen to link to that. Oops. Oops. That's the risk of a demo. I need to copy past this. Okay, I'll show it later. So uh, I have it somewhere, so I'll, I can find it back. So basically the idea was to show you uh, server.xml with the correct entries. Um, so when we say session replication in the, in the cloud, the configuration, uh, it looked first very scary what we need to, uh, to tell to it, but this is in fact very easy. Uh, this is just a connection. Uh, I started the Tomcat pod, uh, connect to it, uh, and then look to the environment variable. Uh, as you can see, uh, Kubernetes is providing uh, in the port everything we need. Uh, it's giving it the, uh, the namespace we're using. Uh, it's uh, giving in uh, the uh, different uh, port we can be used. They are all uh, a way to access to uh, uh, the control plane. Uh, it gives also um, uh, some other information uh, that uh, we can have a look here. Uh, like basically uh, the pods are created with some information that you need to access to it. Uh, basically uh, they're going to be, uh, actually here yeah, they are in var run. They can be in some other location, but uh, that depend on uh, the container you're running. Uh, so basically if you look there, uh, you'll, you'll have the, the certificate because basically you're going to make a SSH uh, you're going to make a TLS connection, uh, basically HTTPS. Uh, to the master, and uh, you need the um, the CR of the master, which belong to the internal uh, Kubernetes stuff, which have been created by the Kubernetes installation. So uh, this is the uh, CR certificate of the uh, uh, that as uh, the CR certificate that have been used to sign the certificate uh, of the master node. You're going to connect uh, to it to get the information about the pods. So you need to have this information. Uh, the next information uh, you have is uh, the token. The token is a kind of like uh, something like uh, usually when you connect to Kubernetes, you're going to use QB admin and a password. Uh, when you install Kubernetes, it's going to generate this password for you. So you, you have to reuse, you can reuse it. Uh, if someone installed it for you, you will have the password, we will have to give it to you, but you have a way to uh, avoid send, uh, using password. You can have token, token can be regenerated via a common in Kubernetes. So you just logging uh, to the Kubernetes with your username, password, generate the token, and the token is going to be one of these big ID. Uh, um, I have cut it so that you can't destroy my, uh, my demo. Uh, you will need to connect to it, but this token is valid for a while. Uh, if you uh, use a real uh, thing, uh, don't publish it, it would be a bit dangerous. Um, in the namespace, you just have the namespace uh, I've been using in this example, uh, which in fact is not Tomcat in the cloud, but Tomcat here. You can, uh, uh, you can see it uh, over here. Okay, uh, so I've been clicking on the wrong place. So let's, uh, I'm going to try to show my demo. Uh, I, I'm not going to move my laptop uh, to the table where the demo is running, uh, just running in the next uh, in the next room on the small table. Uh, so basically uh, uh, you can set up, you can build a cloud uh, to make tests very easily. Uh, you just need a bunch of Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm using one uh, here, which is a kind of infrastructure stuff. Uh, 
it contains uh, an HTTPD server that is that is running there, which I'm going to uh, to use basically to connect to the to the Tomcat that uh, emulate the uh, infrastructure uh, part of uh, of uh, Kubernetes, where basically you're going to have uh, whatever HA proxy nginx or something like that. Um, it is connected to my laptop uh, via the Ethernet cable, as you can see. Uh, so this is just a, a server uh, which I'm going. I'm using uh, to uh, install the other one. It's also used the uh, Wi-Fi of the uh, Raspberry Pi to make the connection because basically this a small demo I'm usually carrying in with me uh, at the conference uh, to make different kind of demo. So um, the the other uh, server, uh, this one is um, is the control plane. Uh, it's basically the Raspberry, which uh, I've started uh, Kubernetes as a, in, a, in a master mode. Uh, and uh, the two others, which are here, uh, don't, don't, don't get misled by the, by the display. Uh, it's, it's, it's just to add for some other demo. Uh, I use it to put nice color, but uh, uh, I would have to move that to show it to, so you don't see it. So basically, those are two nodes. Uh, and on those two nodes, I can uh, start a bunch of Tomcat. So uh, moving to the next slide. So basically, uh, you have the infra, which was the first uh, Raspberry I've, I've, dis uh, I've described. Uh, you have the, uh, the master control plane, and uh, you have two nodes, which have uh, a name, uh, one uh, green and one blue, uh, you can guess easily why, because basically uh, uh, when I run the demo, I'm uh, switching on the LEDs uh, as a green or blue. So it's more easy for me to know which one is running, which one is not running and count the number of Tomcat that are there. So basically the demo um, on, on, the, on, on the portal, I will have HTTP running, uh, I'm listing uh, the uh, different nodes uh, that belong to the uh, to Kubernetes uh, there. Uh, it's kind of uh, easy uh, easy to see. Basically, um, I'm I'm going to uh, have a, a one uh, going to master, one going uh, to green, one going to blue. So basically, my my three nodes are able to uh, kind of load balance uh, to the different Tomcat pods. Um, on this on on this same box, uh, I have also a registry. Uh, here I am at home, so I could have had uh, I could have used a registry like uh, Docker IO. Uh, but normally I'm running this this demo in a conference, so without a good connection. Uh, so I usually have my own registry where I basically uh, it's the Docker registry. So basically I'm going to be able uh, there to push uh, an image, uh, and then I'm going also to be able to pick. Uh, the image uh, uh, quite easily. So basically, uh, you push an image. It's uh, like in a in a in a, in a Docker IO. Uh, I have the image also in Docker IO for uh, some Katakoda demo. So basically, uh, I can also compile the image on the on the box and push it. It's quite easy. You just push it and uh, push it to the to the right one. So it push it to the portal on the port where the uh, uh, registry is running. And uh, that's the image I want, and that's the tag. So um, uh, once I have started the, the demo, which uh, is here, so I should be able to start it. So I, I let's let you show that I have started the uh, the node, and I'm really uh, running on uh, Raspberry Pi. Well, it does not say it's a Raspberry Pi. It could be a big server, but it's a Raspberry Pi uh, running on 64-bit. Uh, um, so, uh, I'm, so, it, so here, uh, basically, uh, I'm uh, on the portal. I could have I done that on my laptop, but uh, I just use SSH to the portal, and uh, I can run a different command. So. Uh, I'm going to start, uh, basically, to start the demo, which is, uh, I will comment while it's running. I'm good in typo. 
So basically, uh, it's going to uh, uh, to create uh, an namespace. Um, it's going to uh, set the default uh, context. Uh, it's going to deploy the Tomcat uh, the Tomcat demo. It's going to create the service I need uh, to find the other Tomcat. Uh, it's going to uh, says I want uh, a scale to two. Uh, so I have two Tomcat started, uh, and at some point I'm going to have two Tomcat started. Uh, you can see that like, uh, they uh, are uh, container creating. So I, after some uh, moment, I should have two pods running. So I get pods, and uh, I have uh, one running, uh, and the other one is not yet ready. So uh, if I Start again, then I have the two ready. So now I can connect to the, uh, I can to connect uh, to my server, uh, with, where I have uh, uh, HTTPD uh, running. Uh, So uh, here we are on the uh, we are basically on one of the Raspberry which con uh, have HTTPD running. Uh, it had, uh, connected to the Tomcat application is connected on one pod. Uh, you, it's maybe a bit small. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to make it bigger so that I guess it's Control Plus. So uh, so you see. Uh, so this is uh, this is a counter. If I'm refreshing, uh, the counter uh, is going to increase, and uh, normally uh, the uh, the pod is going to change. I guess it changed. Uh, so you have yeah the G session ID uh, and uh, the server where it's running. And if uh, I look to this, this is the pod. And if I look here in the pod, I have this pod uh, here running. This is one of the pod. Uh, if I would delete the port, it would be recreated. So uh, let's do it. Uh, so kubectl uh, delete. You're not supposed to delete port, but that's working. And I should have some clever auto completion stuff. No, uh, I'm going to try a copy past. So I'm going. There's no way I can get this without mistake. And that's the other one, no? Ah! Don't do demo. It's too dangerous. So I delete it. Ah, I want to delete a pod. You can delete everything. So I have deleted the pod. That's the pod that we were using before. Uh, it's going to be recreated. Uh, um, if you look here, you see. Uh, is recreating it. At some point, it's ready. Uh, in some time, now it's ready. And if I refresh and all goes right, I should have my counter increase, and I'm on the other pod. So uh, this small demo uh, is working. So I'm going back to the presentation. Uh, you have everything you need for the demo. Um, so this is this is the demo didn't or, or does not always work. So this is I have to slide to kind of uh, show it. Uh, I want to be on the slide. Sorry, uh, where is my presentation? Here it is. Um, okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's one uh, part of the demo. Uh, I have also demo that you can, you're going to be able to run them uh, on your own. That's that's uh, that's easy. Uh, they use Katacoda. Uh, Katacoda is a very nice tool uh, so that you can run. Uh... Okay, I need to hurry up as usual. Uh, so. Um, you can run the first uh, the first demo on your own. Uh, it's 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 quite easy. I'm going to show the second one. Uh, the second one uh, show a little more. Uh, I I will do it later. I will explain uh, what else we have. So I will come back to this slide uh, 
in some minutes because otherwise I will finish late. So an operator. Uh, an operator is a nice tool uh, Kubernetes is, is, uh, is providing us. Um, we are able uh, that way to create everything we need uh, instead of having a, a file to do that. Um, it can create the service, uh, it can create the roots. Uh, the roots is uh, basically a name we use in uh, OpenShift, uh, which correspond to the ingress in Kubernetes. It can also build uh, either using a, a S2I or any other build mechanism. Uh, we we have prepared uh, one, uh, I mean, my team have prepared one uh, in Go. Uh, you can have a look to the code. Uh, it uh, using an Apache license, so uh, feel free to uh, play with it, uh, uh, fork it, uh, contribute, and so on. Uh, we, in this operator, we use init containers. Init containers is kind of uh, an, a nice tool that allows us uh, basically to have a very clever container uh, because basically you give him a new URL of your web app. Uh, you need a web app that uh, is using uh, is built using Maven, uh, which is usually uh, quite easy. Uh, so basically, uh, once you start the pod, is going to pick uh, the URL is and is going to build uh, your application uh, and expose it to the internet. So I need to hurry a little. Um, so uh, here is the page where we have uh, a lot of information. Uh, I will make the slide available and uh, I'm going to take some questions. And if there's not too many questions, uh, I will uh, run the demo. I will start the demo while taking questions because the Katakoda needs some time uh, to start. Actually, it might be still running. Uh, so if it's still running, I can answer the question now. Are there any questions? Chris, uh, there's a lot of stuff in the... Any question? No question so far. Oh. Okay, so um, I, I'm going to try to uh, show a little uh, about the operator. A uh, lot of, of, of the steps I've already, already done, so uh, uh, in order to, to, to save some time, uh, the good thing with Katakoda, you can't make any error. Uh, you just click on the things you have uh, you have done. Or oh, I already make the make install. Uh, I'll uh, I'm going to just basically check out the stuff I need. Uh, I was building the application before. I was logging to my Docker. Uh, I was pushing my demo. Uh, so this step is already done. That's not the most uh, interesting part. Uh, here I describe how to install the operator. This is really working. You can try if you want. Uh, that's kind of time consuming, um, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going uh, to check that stuff out. Uh, it, it seems I already checked it out. Uh, basically, uh, I need to be in the directory. Uh, I already pushed the image. Uh, I need uh, to create my namespace. I need to set the correct namespace. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, uh, configure it. I'm not in the right directory. I must have the right directory here, I guess. And I just install. So basically, it's installing the operator. Uh, if I go in the next step, uh, I can get some cluster info. It's running. I can get pod. I have an operator running. Uh, so now I'm going to go to uh, the demo web app. In the demo web app, uh, I have the configuration to start the operator, which basically it's a small file that describes my application. Uh, I can start uh, see that the pod are starting. Um, you see that it is for the moment the pod are in the init stage, which basically they taking the URL and building uh, uh, the Tomcat application. I can show what is in the uh, custom resource file, for example, um, if I tap it at the right place. Um, and 
So in the custom resource, there's not much things. Uh, the names are, uh, if it's a demo, so uh, pardon me that I have uh, used uh, tomcatadapache.org. Uh, this is uh, not in the ISF yet, so basically I should not use that name. Uh, the application in is Tomcat, uh, Tomcat demo. He uh, is uh, picking, picking this uh, application, which is uh, the, uh, uh, this is a Tomcat image that I've prepared based on the uh, Tomcat uh, uh, Maven stuff, uh, stuff in Tomcat. Uh, I have uh, another uh, uh, image, which is basically a builder, uh, just a Maven builder. It's a basically a, uh, CentOS installation that contains Maven and a Git, and it's able to uh, uh, make a, a Git checkout of uh, my application and build it. And uh, now if we are lucky, uh, the pods should be ready. I, so we can check the, that the services are running. We have some services running. We, we have to expose the stuff. Um, and now it is exposed. Um, uh, we can check that it's, it is there. I, I have prepared some scripts in order to uh, find out easily uh, the port I need to use. Uh, and I have a typo. Never mind, it's easy. This one is easy. So I have the port. Uh, you can either uh, um, use a uh, EF config uh, and use the uh, web port of the mass of the master to connect to it, um, which is probably not a good idea. Uh, uh, you can also uh, then if you, once you have it, you can curl for it, but you can also uh, basically uh, go directly to the application, uh, which it uh, it's, uh, it's not found, but uh, you can see it's a Tomcat page, and I think it's just that uh, uh, I missed the URL of my demo. And I, I have my demo running. Oh, uh, I used the wrong uh, the wrong date, so I can uh, I can change that. It's the last part of the demo. I can edit uh, uh, my application. It's here already. Uh, uh, basically, I make edit, uh, and I'm going to change this. I uh, hopefully no typo. I go down, uh, commit the change. Uh, the change have been committed. I uh, go back to the demo. Uh, I can get all. Um, I can uh, uh, delete uh, what I have um, say. I can delete the deployment, uh, and I can recreate them. Uh, this just recreate the, the deployment, and the new deployment should have picked the new version. You can see if if I do get pod again. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the pod are starting. Uh, I need a uh, one or two minutes. Uh, maybe a few seconds. Categoda is slow. So actually I have nothing running. So pod initializing. As soon as I have one pod, I can show that something has changed. Running, but it's not ready. One is ready, so I should be able to go there. And if I refresh, I have the new application running. I'm sorry, I've finished a bit out of time. So that's it. Chris, anything to say? Nope. Thank you very much for your presentation today. Um, if you guys have any questions for Jean Frederic, you can go to the Slack channel. Uh, there's a Tomcat channel in the Slack. And um, there's also going to be a Birds of a Feather this evening starting at 2015 UTC. Um, we don't have a full track schedule today. I believe the last two sessions don't have content. So uh, enjoy some other sessions for those two. Uh, but please join us for the Birds of a Feather uh, later today. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Bye-bye.